Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man, here at CES 2023. In this video, I'll be covering all the latest and greatest ATSC 3.0 next-gen TV and TV antenna tech. A big shout out to Telvis for buying me this badge so I'm able to cover this amazing trade show for you guys. CES is a consumer electronics show that takes place in Las Vegas. This year's show is expected to draw close to 100,000 attendees. While CES showcases all different kinds of new technology, which you can find coverage of on other YouTube channels, my focus was on next-gen TV and TV antenna tech. My first stop was at the ATSC 3.0 next-gen TV booth. One Media, a division of Sinclair Broadcast Group, demonstrated how next-gen TV enables on-demand content for the viewer including news stories, weather, and real-time traffic updates. I noticed that the picture quality of the ATSC 3.0 broadcast signal on the top TV was significantly sharper with more details than the ATSC 1.0 broadcast signal on the bottom TV. Next to the TV was a demo that showed how ATSC 3.0 can be used to offer both live TV and next-gen radio services in a car dashboard interface. ATSC 3.0 can use data casting on a broadcast TV signal to send digital signage or news updates to public video screens like you see here. While the booth had a map of where next-gen TV is deployed, I noticed a mistake on it. Philadelphia has not deployed ATSC 3.0. Lies. In fact, the market has been listed as coming this year for the last five years. More on this in my interview with ATSC President Madeline Noland a bit later in this video. For up-to-date information about what areas have next-gen TV broadcasts on the air and when other markets will launch, be sure to visit watchnextgentv.com. Several ATSC 3.0 set-top boxes were on display from various companies, including Guyan, VBOX, and Zapperbox, which you will see me review in a future video. Another glass display was an ATSC 3.0 enabled smartphone and TV tuner dongle made by Sankia Labs for One Media. The company invited me to a private suite to demonstrate both. Here's a quick video. They also had a video on display that showed the difference between an HDR and non HDR video broadcast. HDR video has a higher contrast ratio and brings more details in the picture to light. I'm told that all Sinclair TV stations that broadcast a next-gen signal have HDR on the air. Geniatech had a booth that showed an ATSC 3.0 enabled streaming box, USB tuner, and computer module that can bring live TV broadcasts into tablets and computers. I did not dig into what new TV models will have next-gen tuners built into them because this information can easily be located on watchnextgentv.com under the Shop Devices tab. So I'm here with Madeline Nolan, the president of the Advanced Television Systems Committee, to ask a few questions that you guys want me to ask her. So Madeline, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, do this interview and answer a few questions. Well, it's my pleasure. It's quite an honor to be on Antenna Man TV. <laughs> Thanks so Thanks, much. Thanks, Antenna Man. Yeah, no problem. So my first question that I got from my viewers is, how much will reception improve with ATSC 3.0 next-gen TV? I think the important thing to say about the difference between ATSC 1.0 and ATSC 3.0 is you look at that one point that ATSC 1.0 has, and if you use 3.0 and you wanted to send the same strength of signal, you could send 30% more data with 3.0 than you could with 1.0. And that doesn't count the improvement in video codec. That's just the physical layer by itself. On the flip side, if you said, well, I want to send the exact same amount of data that I'm sending on 1.0 with 3.0, then I can send that exact amount of data much stronger, 30% more robust than with 1.0. So either way you decide to go, more data or stronger signal, 3.0 is a massive improvement over 1.0 in terms of signal strength and throughput. That's excellent. And another question I have from some of my viewers is, when do you think broadcasters will start to put 4K content over the air? I know we're in the very early stages of it, but uh, do you have any idea on a time frame? 
I think that the 4K content is going to depend on two things. One is it, it's going to depend on how quickly we can reduce the amount of spectrum that we use for simulcasting ATSC 1.0. Right now, even in the markets that have ATSC 3.0 services, the majority of the channels are still broadcasting ATSC 1.0. And all the broadcasters that are participating in the market launch have their ATSC 3.0 services on one transmitter. All the other transmitters are still 1.0. Now, if we can reduce and reduce and reduce the number of transmitters that are transmitting 1.0, then we get more and more bandwidth for ATSC 3.0, and then we can start seeing 4K services come through. Another question I have from some of my viewers is, when will we start to see more affordable next-gen TV tuners on the market, like in a form of a set-top box? Just to my understanding now, there's not much on the market, and what is on the market is usually above the $200 price tag. So when do you think we'll start to see more affordable tuners? I think we're going to see that in the next couple of years. Uh, here at CES 2023, ATSC has a part of its booth that we call Set-Top Box World, and it's showing all the set-top boxes, dongles, even cell phones that are in development um, for next-gen TV receivers. We're also showing something that I, I like to call the sausage making, because we're showing what's called a reference platform, which is a fast-track program. It's a chipset with a middleware already done, with 75% of all of the conformance testing passed, and so it makes it a lot easier for a manufacturer to get in the business of putting out next-gen TVs. So I know I'm not answering your question, but I'd have to have a crystal ball to really know the answer to your question. I'm excited about the progress. We must have a, almost a dozen devices that we're showing that are coming on the market and are gonna become available very soon, so. Yeah, I saw a bunch of them. It's really amazing how much more devices are available now compared to two or three years ago. Yes, and I also think that announcements like Jamaica announcing that they're going to do ATSC 3.0 is going to help drive that marketplace because they, like the U.S., need low-cost devices, perhaps more than the U.S. Another question I got some, from some viewers is, when do you think ATSC 3.0 will be deployed in larger markets like New York City and Philadelphia? where it's currently not around. I live in Boston, in my home market, and we were supposed to get deployed in December, and then it got pushed back, and it got pushed back. Now we're looking at the end of January. There's just so many pieces that have to fall into place, particularly with the large markets. And I know that the broadcasters are just hammering on this to get it done, but I think what you're pointing out is really critically important piece. In some ways, the broadcasters have launched the markets that are the low-hanging fruit. And we got the hard ones to do now, right? But good news, Miami launched today. So I think six hours ago, Miami was not 3.0, and they are now. And that's a big market. Boston probably by the end of January. And I'm just keeping my fingers crossed for when Philly and Chicago and New York are going to get done. I know that they're just working 24-7 on it. And it's just a question of hammering out the right agreements. So we'll get there. So is there any other things you want to share about Next Gen TV to my viewers that maybe a question I didn't ask? Well, I would say that what's really exciting to me is what's actually on TV for content. The interactivity is coming alive and we're here on the air with, um, with the broadcasts that are here in Las Vegas. We're watching interactivity on several of our TV TVs around the exhibit. Um, the 1080p upscaling looks terrific, I gotta say. And I'm really excited about the content and I'm really rooting for the broadcasters to get their messages out to the consumer that it's that much better. It's really worth it. Excellent, well thanks so much for taking the time for this interview and uh, answering some of my viewers' questions. My pleasure, thank you very much, Antenna Man. Now to dive into some antenna tech at CES. Televis showed some of their indoor and outdoor antennas, many of which have been reviewed on my YouTube channel. Their new SmartCom antenna combiner was on display as well. This is a true game changer in antenna technology. Besides the commercial grade Televis Avon X, this is one of the only true antenna combiners that lets you combine up to three antennas on one coaxial cable without the issue of insertion loss and multipath interference you usually get from other quote unquote combiners that are basically backwards two-way cable splitters. While I do plan to review the Telvis SmartCom sometime in the spring or summer, you can order it now from the link in the description of my video. 
Supersonic had a few battery powered TV sets on display in various sizes. These are perfect for traveling, camping, emergencies, or to use as a guide when setting up an outdoor antenna. On the antenna side, I wasn't too impressed. Really? I really want to smash this. There are too many witnesses. Not quite antenna related, but I did find some cool retro style radios from Supersonic, Emerson, RCA Victor, and Crossley that some of you may like. I include links to a few in the description. I got deja vu in this part of the Emerson booth. Oh, come on! Besides a few junk antennas, I was definitely impressed with what I saw this year at CES in terms of next gen TV and antenna tech. Several ATSC 3.0 set top boxes were announced, with some, such as the Zapper box, available to purchase right now. Televis also impressed me with their SmartCom antenna combiner. Thanks so much for watching this YouTube video and be sure to share it. Depending on how it performs, I may return to CES in 2024 if this is the kind of content you guys like.